schools. This meeting is being live streamed onto the Council's YouTube channel and a recording of it will be available after the meeting. Please note that all guests will have their microphones muted when they join the meeting. You, may, you will be asked to remain on mute until I ask you to speak. For example, in the three minute slots reserved for objectors, the applicant, supporters and ward council. Let's double check I'm being heard. Yes. You're supposed to be listening to my announcements, Councillor Seaton. Please do not switch on your microphone until I've given you permission to speak. Attendees who are using the telephone dial-in function on a smartphone are also muted. If I ask you to speak, please dial star six to unmute yourself. To ensure that this virtual meeting runs smoothly, only one individual will be allowed to speak at any time. Any person speaking must be permitted to finish what they are saying without interruption. If I request that an individual stop speaking, they should do so immediately. Interruptions may result in you being disconnected from this meeting. If a member of the subcommittee wishes to speak, could I ask them to indicate this via the raised hand symbol or on the message board? Members of the public are reminded that the message board is not for public use. Any messages left on the message board by members of the public will be disregarded by subcommittee members. Bearing in the mind that this meeting is being live streamed and that a recording will be available on the Council's YouTube channel, if you are planning to speak, you may choose to switch off your camera so that only your voice will be heard. Members of the public who are disconnected from the meeting due to technical difficulties should use the link or dial-in instructions they were sent initially to return to the meeting. Members of the public are welcome to record, screenshot or tweet the public proceedings of the meeting. A copy of the Council's protocol for reporting and filming is available on the Southwark website. During the meeting, members of this subcommittee will not access the internet except as it relates to the official business of the meeting. Send or receive emails, text messages or tweets concerning the business of the subcommittee to anyone outside the meeting. Please note that members may be accessing the agenda papers via the internet. We will be taking a five minute screen break every hour and reconvening afterwards. I would now like the officers to introduce themselves and explain their roles at this meeting. Starting with the planning officers, um, Dipesh Patel. Thank you, Chair. My name is Dipesh Patel. I'm the senior planning officer um, at tonight's meeting. I'm here to advise on both items for consideration. Freya. Hi everyone, my name is Freya and I'm the case officer for item 7.1. Andre. Good evening, I'm the case officer for the second application. Now the legal officer. Good evening Chair, my name is Margaret Foley, I'm the legal officer for this meeting and my role is to advise members of the subcommittee about matters, legal matters concerned with planning issues and to deputise for the monitoring officer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And the clerk? Beverly, you're on mute. Still on mute. Sorry, Chair. <laughs> um, yes, my name is uh, Beverly Ogamajulo. I'm the Constitutional Officer and Clerk of this subcommittee, and I'm here to minute the meeting and to advise on the procedures for the hearing for the items and for decision making. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Item two, apologies. We've received apologies from Councillor Richard Leeming. Com uh, item three, confirmation of voting members. I will now ask members of the subcommittee to confirm that they are a voting member of this subcommittee. Councillor Adele Morris, the vice chair. Uh, yes, chair, I'm the vice chair and the voting member. Councillor Maggie Browning. Um, yes, Chair, I can confirm that I'm a voting member. Councillor Sunil Chopra. Uh, thanks, Chair. Yes, I'm a voting member. Thank you. Can Councillor Martin Seaton. 
Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. Councillor Jane Salmon. Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. And my name is Councillor Kath Whittemer. I can confirm that I too am a voting member of this subcommittee. Item four, notification of any items of business which I deem urgent. Um, the addendum report relating to items 7.1 and 7.2 have been circulated. Uh, Beverly, could you tell the members of the public what they're called uh, online? The Bridget? addendum, the addendum report, and the uh, members pack. I have circulated it to the speakers, so they should receive a copy. You should have received a copy. Okay. So one is supplementary. Agenda. Uh, the, uh, supplementary agenda one is the uh, members pack and supplement, uh, supplemental, sorry, supplementary agenda number two is the addendum report. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Jay. Uh, item five, disclosure of interest and dispensation. Does any member wish to declare any interest or dispensation in respect of any item or issue to be considered at this meeting? No, Chair. Thank you. Item six, minutes, pages one to five of the agenda pack. Can we approve these minutes as a correct record of the meetings held on 26th of January, 2021? Are the meetings agreed. minutes agreed? Agreed, Chair. Agreed, Chair. Thank you. Agreed. Item seven, Development management. The next item of business concerns the determination of planning applications. I would like to remind everyone of the subcommittee guidance on the conduct of business. Firstly, officers will present the report outlining their recommendations and answering questions raised by the subcommittee. Then if present and wishing to speak, the following may then address the subcommittee for no more than three minutes each. One person, spokesperson representing any objectors to the application. By now you need to have identified a single spokesperson. If more than one objector wishes to speak, the time will be divided accordingly within the three minute, three minute time slot. Following there, uh, the applicant or their agent will have their three minutes. Then one spokesperson representing any supporters of the application who lives within 100 metres of the development site. And finally, a ward council representing the area affected by the proposal will also get three minutes. Each speaker should restrict their comments to the planning aspects of the proposal and should avoid repeating information which is already in the report. The meeting is not a hearing where all participants present evidence to be examined by other participants. At the end of each representation, the subcommittee may ask questions of the presenter. Speakers should lead the subcommittee onto subjects on which they would welcome further questioning. Ward members in attendance of those nominated to speak on behalf of objectors, supporters and applicants may be asked to make further brief contributions in case any issues need to be clarified after they have addressed the meeting. This is not an opportunity to take part in the debate of the subcommittee. After receiving all submissions, the subcommittee will debate the application and consider the recommendation. This is a council subcommittee meeting, which is open to the public and there should be no interruptions from members of the public. Finally, I would like everyone present to know that although planning committee subcommittee comprises members from different political parties, we are not politically whipped. Our decisions are made in accordance with the council's planning policy and based on that information, contained within the relevant reports, together with consultation responses and any verbal submissions made today. How we approach these applications is set out in the development management report at item seven. And if members are happy to note that report, we will move on to considering the planning applications. Are you content? Content, Chair, yeah. content. Thank you. 
Item 7.1, the Pavilion, 65 Greendale, London, Southwark, SE5 8JZ. Pages 10 to 30 of the main agenda pack and the relevant pages of the addendum report. There's very little uh, in the addendum report on this. So considering the officer's report, um, it's Freya, is it? On this one? Yeah. Yes, it's true. Would you like to present your report, please? Um, yes, so the application site is Mother Goose Nursery at 65 Greendale. The site is located on the boundary of the Greendale Plainfields Metropolitan Open Land. The nursery previously found the DU's class and now falls under the EU's class under the 2020 amendment to the use class order. The proposal is to install a roof extension to the rear of the building to create a first floor. The site is not in a conservation area or in the setting of any heritage assets. And the site is found by a four story residential block to the north being 44 Wanley Road, a three story residential block to the northeast, 17 Wanley Road, the metropolitan open land to the east and south, and across the road from the site, uh, a pair of two semi detached residential dwellings to the west. Uh, there was one objection received to this case, and that was based on the inappropriate use of the land on the mall, and due, due to concerns over the impact to neighbour amenity in terms of privacy, noise and increased traffic. This objection has been addressed in the report, and I will also address it during this presentation. The total site area is 1,156 square metres, and it's occupied by the single storey building which is set back from the road. The current building floor space is 247 square metres. The building is surrounded by outdoor play spaces and sheds, and there's a small staff car park within the store at the front. There was a wildlife garden at the rear. And the entire site is surrounded by a 2.7 metre tall mesh fence. You can see in the proposed site plan that the entire extension would take place within the existing, existing building floor print and then no other external works proposed on site. Uh, the entirety of the floor space is set across the ground floor at present. In the members pack, you can see on the existing ground floor plan, the blue color shows the staff space, the green color is the preschool space, and the yellow and orange. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can, can we see these slides? Um, would you like me to share my screen and present them? Yes, please. Okay, let me just open it up one moment, please. Have you got the relevant um, permission? She has, Chair. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Chair, I'm just opening it up now. Can you see the slides, Chair? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think I'll just start from this slide. This is the proposed side block plan. So the entirety of the development would be within the existing floor prints um, on the outrigger at the rear. And this is the existing ground floor plan. Um, as I said, the blue areas are all the staff space, the green is the preschool space, and that's for three to five years old children. And the, um, the smaller space is for children three years or younger. 
This is a proposed ground floor plan. And you can note that the preschool floor space is now increased. Uh, the increase will allow an additional nine children to attend the nursery, bringing the total from 59 as existing to 68 following the completion of the development. And that is possible because all of the first floor space proposed under the development would be office floor space for staff. So this slide here, it shows the proposed first floor. 92 square metres of additional floor space and a new green roof is proposed to the centre of the existing single storey roof on the original building. This is a proposed roof plan. You can see there's three new roof lights proposed over the development. And this is the existing north and east facing plan. You can note that at present, the rear outrigger has got a pitched roof. And then on this next slide, you can see the proposed extension to create the first floor um, to the rear. The maximum height of the extension would be 6.9 metres and that would only be 1.1 metres taller than the existing tallest point of the roof being here. You can see due to the pitch of the roof. There would be two side facing windows and one window facing towards the front of the site and the two side facing windows would be onto a residential car park at the rear of the block. Um, next to the nursery, which means that there wouldn't be any impact to privacy of the um, of the neighbours residing within the residential block. This is the existing south and west facing elevation, and you can note that at present the single storey nursery is dwarfed by the surrounding residential blocks, um, with 17 Monley Road being four storeys tall and then these Greendale apartments being part three, part four story tall. And then this slide, you can see that even with the proposed extension installed at the rear, the nursery still appears to be dwarfed by the surrounding residential blocks. This is the existing west and south facing elevation plans. Again, you can see the surrounding residential blocks in these plans. And then this is a proposed south and west elevation plan. It gives you an idea of the scale of the proposed extension. Um, and you can also note the green roof proposed to the extension. This is a very helpful slide. It shows the existing and proposed 3D view looking from the north towards the nursery. Um, the extension materials it would be clad in timber and the entire extension would have a green roof. And that would help the development to link to the original building with the green roof proposed symbol of the original building. And this is a proposed south and west facing elevation plans. Again, you can see here how great the separation distance is from the extension to the residential block beside the nursery. Even with the additional nine pupils bringing the total to 68, it is not considered that there'll be any increased impact, any um, harmful impact to the amenity of neighbors in terms of noise. It's only a 15% increase in the pupil number of the nursery. And as the entirety of the first floor would only be for staff use, um, it's not expected that any noise would come from the side facing windows such that it would impact on the neighbors. This is the existing view looking from the uh, Greendale Plainfields Mole towards the nursery. So you can note that there's a lot of dense trees towards the rear. And you can see here again, how the height of the nursery is dwarfed by those blocks in the background. 
And this is what that same view would look like with the development installed. Um, you can note how due to the use of the timber cladding and the green roof, the extension appears um, subservient to the original building and also is quite sympathetic to the setting of the mall. This is the existing and proposed view from the north facing towards the nursery. And you can note that due to an existing tree line of evergreen trees that are on the site, it's very difficult to actually be able to see the extension from this view. These images are very relevant due to the appeal that was dismissed in 2007. Um, at that time, the applicant applied for a two-story rear extension to the nursery and this was refused and dismissed the appeal. And in the decision, in the appeal decision, the inspector, their main reason for refusing the appeal is that they consider that the extension would result in a harmful impact on the openness of the mall. However, when they made that decision in 2007, this building in the front, this um, four story tall block here, that hadn't been built yet, that was only granted in 2012. So since the appeal was dismissed, the context of the site has changed. Um, and it is now, um, I would consider that it's quite difficult to argue that the impact to the mole would be impacted beyond the existing um, the views would not be strongly impacted due to the extension um, not being so visible given the context of these taller surrounding residential blocks. This is a 3D visual of what the extension would look like. Um, it clearly labels the materials that are proposed to be used, including the timber cladding and the green roof. And you can see the side facing windows just here as well. The applicant submitted a transport assessment to support the application. Um, at present, there are 59 pupils attending the nursery and it's supposed to increase to 68. And the result of the transport assessment is that 61% of parents drop off their children by walking and only 10% actually drive their children to the nursery. Um, this suggests that with the very minor proposed increase in pupil numbers, it's very unlikely that there will be a noticeable in increase in vehicular traffic um, at drop-off and collection times. And this slide just shows the drop-off and collection times, so between 8am and 8.30, and then between 5 and 6, the pickup. So it's just normal rush hour times. The applicant also was asked to submit a parking survey, which was carried out across several weekdays in order to monitor the parking situation on the road directly outside of the nursery. Um, and you can note here that at the morning drop off and the collection times, um, very few cars are actually parked outside the nursery. There remains plenty of space for any local residents to be able to park within that area. And there is a parking permit in place as well for that road. Um, in terms of policy, when the original application in 2007 was refused and dismissed the appeal, the uh, saved policy, I haven't got my, my notice to hand, I think it's, it's 2.3, states that um, it gives a list of land uses that are appropriate on the mall um, and nurseries aren't included and also says that development may be permitted um, to dwellings if the proposed extension is appropriate and remains subservient to the building, doesn't impact on the openness of the mall. However, the NPPF and the emerging open space policy of the new Suffolk plan, they've removed the reference to dwellings and they now just refer to buildings. So they say that um, an appropriate extension to a building may be acceptable if it does not impact on the openness of the mole. And so in this case, it is proposed that the 
extension is subserving to the original building, that it would not have any noticeable impact on the openness of the mall. Um, and also wouldn't have any harmful impact on the immunity of the neighbouring occupiers. And for those reasons, it is proposed that this application should be granted. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Freya. Um, have any members got any questions of clarification for Freya? Councillor Salmon? Chair, it's not a vital thing, and I'm just trying to show how sharp I am on observation. Are the school actually going to change the fencing around the school? Because in some pictures it seems to be clear, and then in the next proposed, it all seems to be fenced in. Am I just seeing something that well, isn't really there? Um, I can respond. So there isn't any changes proposed to the fencing. The only works proposed are just the first floor extension. Now the works are just on site. Just the drawing. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I lost my page. Okay, so thank you for that, Freya. Um, so we move on now to objectors. Does anybody present wish to speak in objection? We have no registered objectors. But just in case anybody's here. Nope. Okay. So we move on to um, the applicant or applicant's agent. We have um, Ms. Susanna Asher and Krish Brown, the applicant. Is that correct? Yes, no, I'm, I'm the agent and I am um, speaking on behalf of the applicant. Okay, one second. So you will have three minutes to speak. I, are both of you going to speak or just, just you, Susanna? Just me. Okay. So can you first of all introduce yourself and the company that you work for? Um, yes, my name is Susanna Asher and I work for Asher Planning Limited, um, Town Planning Consultant. And I'll be speaking on behalf of Chris Brown, the applicant. Okay, we've got three minutes whenever you wish to start. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I'm speaking on behalf of the applicant who owns and runs Mother Goose Nursery at 65 Greendale. The application is for a first floor extension to enable the nursery to maintain pre-COVID numbers and operate safely in accordance with government guidance. The extension will be used for staff facilities. This extra space will enable staff to socially distance whilst allowing more of the ground floor to be used as childcare space to keep children in separate groups. The site is in the mall, which is treated as green belt in terms of policy. The MPPF states that the construction of new buildings is inappropriate with exceptions, which include the extension or alteration of a building provided that it does not result in disproportionate additions over and above the size of the original building. This proposal will not result in disproportionate additions. The height will only be 1.1 metres higher than the existing roof and still much lower than neighbouring 17 Wanley Road and 67 Green Dell. The extension will have a pitched green roof and will unify the existing roof slopes, improving the appearance of the building. The proposal will not unduly affect openness because the adjacent flats built in 2012 have greatly increased bulk next to the site. The nursery site is in an accessible location. The nursery currently has a capacity of 59 children. Post COVID, this would increase to 68. The nursery has recently undertaken a travel survey which shows that if the existing journey pattern continues, this would represent an increase of around two children being dropped off, picked up by car per day. The surrounding area is in a controlled parking zone created in 2018, which operates between 11 and 1, Monday to Friday. Most drop-offs and pickups are outside these hours, and so parents and carers can park on the street. The proposal has economic benefits 
which are retaining jobs at the nursery and en enabling local parents to return to work. It also has social benefits, which are ensuring that young children can continue to benefit from nursery education. Mother Goose Nursery has been operating at the site for many years, has a good reputation and is an asset to the local community. We respectfully ask that this application be approved. Thank you. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Does any member of the committee wish to ask a question? Uh, Councillor Morris. Yes, just a, a, a thank you, Suzanne. Uh, just very briefly, so you said right at the beginning that this extension is going to provide a COVID safe space for the staff. Um, obviously, we are talking about an extension to a building which is going to last hopefully beyond COVID uh, and COVID safe. So I just wondered going forward when we are allowed to touch each other and be a, a little bit closer again, whether, you know, what whether the, I suppose what I'm trying to establish is are we getting a building which is designed to be uh, COVID safe uh, which may be bigger than it ultimately needs to be going forward given that as I say it will be here for a long time or, or could you just talk me through oh, and I might apologies if I've misunderstood what you said. Um, no I understand completely um, what you're asking um, I think the um, I think so the reason that um, we've provided the information about the capacity, you know, post COVID is kind of to address that. So, um, you know, for the foreseeable future, the building would enable the numbers of 59 um, children to be maintained. But post COVID, if things do, you know, as and when they do return to normal, there would be that additional capacity there of additional nine children um, but I think having those extensions would just give the nursery more flexibility should a similar kind of COVID situation come up in the future it would just have that extra space you know it's been very difficult for nurseries to to adapt um, to all the new rules and regulations so I think it would it would help them ultimately um, to respond to situations in the future. Thank you. I don't see any other hands. Anybody wish to speak? Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. Please stay until the end of the item in case we need to ask any more questions. Uh, so we now move on to those present, anyone present living within 100 metres of the development site wishing to speak in support of the application. Again, we don't have any registered supporters. So I will move on to <coughs> ward councillors. And the relevant ward councillors are not with us either. So we don't need that section either. So would any member of the subcommittee like to speak further on this application? Councillor Morris. Yeah, just very briefly, obviously this is on uh, metropolitan open land. Um, you know, things have changed obviously since the previous application. Um, and I suppose really the frustration is that those uh, that the flats that were approved are what's changed the context of this, and you know we can't go back and un approve the flats which have already been built. Um, so despite it being on mole, which we ought to be really protecting, um, and and having said that, actually I you know I do acknowledge that they've got the green roof, so they have made some efforts to to make it a bit more um, uh, biodiverse. Uh, but yeah. Generally, metropolitan open land, you know, we should be thinking more carefully about, but I think in this situation, I understand why it's been recommended for approval. That's it, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I would um, be worried if the footprint had changed and got larger rather than just an, a very small uh, addition to one part of the building. I think it will make it look nicer anyway with the green roof and the timber cladding. So I'm content with the design. 
Anybody else wish to speak? Or shall we? Councillor Chopra? Um, thanks, Chair. Just for clarification, I just want to know, um, I think which briefly Councillor Morris did touch. Uh, I just want to clarify, they're not going to rent the upstairs or extension floor to third party afterwards. It will be used solely for their own purpose. And secondly, I would like to know, do they have any external staircase to go in that part of the building or is it internal staircase, please? Thank you. Uh, Suzanne or Chris, would either of you like to answer that? Hello. Um, yeah, they, they, um, it would be for the use of the nursery. They wouldn't be renting it out. Um, and as far as I'm aware, there's no external staircase. And Chris is nodding that. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Okay, as nobody else wishes to speak, we will move to the motion. I would like to move that we adopt the officer's recommendation set out in paragraph one of the report on page 12 of the main agenda pack. That planning permission be granted subject to conditions and the completion of a legal agreement. Does any member of the subcommittee wish to second this? Chair, did we make a note, apologies, of the, the slight correction uh, in the amendment to the, or does it matter that the report has a slight inaccuracy in it? Do we need to reflect that in the minutes decision notice or anywhere? It was, a, it was a really yeah. minor thing, but it was changing on paragraph eight, the new floor space. It was incorrectly reported in the report. Do we need to include that anywhere? I think I need to say, that planning permit should be granted subject to conditions and amendments through the uh, addendum report and the completion of a legal agreement. Okay, seconded. Thank you. Chair, yeah, sorry, this is the legal officer. Yeah. Um, could I just check um, if this is subject to the completion of a legal agreement because that isn't recorded on the the main report. Oh. Is that something that appears in the addendum? It's the second item that is subject to completion of a legal agreement. Subject to conditions only. Okay, I'm, I've got a script and I've got main agenda pack. So um, in the main agenda pack, it says um, planning permission be granted subject to conditions only. Yes, thank you, Chair. That's my understanding. Okay. So belt and braces. So, so we have planning permission to be granted subject to conditions and co correction uh, in the addendum pack. Seconded, Seconded by, Chair. By Councillor Morris. So let's move to the vote. I shall call on you each to record your vote for, against or abstain. So Councillor Morris, for, against or abstain. For, Chair. Councillor Maggie Browning, for, against or abstain. Um, for, Chair. Councillor Sunil Chopra, for, against or abstain. For, Chair. Councillor Martin Seaton, for, against or abstain. For, Chair. Councillor Jane Salmon, for, against or abstain. For, Chair. And I'm Councillor Cathbert and I vote for. So that is carried unanimously and the most, the application is granted. Thank you very much, Suzanne and Chris for coming. Uh, we will now move on to 7.2. Now I notice it's quarter past seven. We could have a five minute break now if members wish. I'm seeing nods from Jane and Martin. Okay, we'll have five minutes break, so we come back at 19.16.